Let me give you a few practical reasons for church planting. Now, now later in our next unit on biblical foundations, I'm going to go into the biblical reasons for church planting, and those are really the more important ones. But right now, I just want to give you a few practical reasons for church planting, because very often uh, somebody will have a vision and say, you know, we really need to plant another church in this city. And then others will say, well, gee, there's enough churches, or why do we want to do that? Or you know, let's just make the existing churches bigger. That is usually what you hear most of us. Well, yes, we want to reach more people, but, you know, the churches that are here are small, and we should just have bigger churches and not start new ones. And I understand that. I have nothing against large churches. I like church, large churches. I attend a large church. But I think large churches can also start new churches. In fact, we sometimes call this God's mathematics. When churches, existing churches, give up, send out believers to start new churches, they actually grow more. And uh, I'll tell you a little bit why that is. But let's go through some of these practical reasons for church planting. First of all, new churches tend to grow faster than established churches. Now this, um, I can give you some examples of this. Uh, some of these examples come from America. It's a little easier for me to get data. I also have some examples from Germany. But it just here's a graph that I'm showing you. This is from the Free Methodists. Uh, this was a 10-year period, 1982 to 1992. And the dotted line um, down here shows you if these churches that existed in 1982 only existed, no churches had, new churches have been planted, this is what the membership in that region would have been. It would have been very constant right around here, around the 3,500. Now this solid line shows you the member total membership of all the churches, including the new church plants. And so they began, as you can see, they began planting more churches. And what happened was by planting new churches, they were able to actually double the membership. The existing churches were not really growing. But you can see that the existing churches are fairly flat. They're sort of just holding their own. It's the new churches that are bringing the growth into this movement. Here's another example if we look at the Church of the Nazarene in the United States, and this is just a, a, a really a, a one-year, two-year window, we see that the older churches, they were not stagnant. There was some growth there. Uh, for example, churches that were 100 years old <laughs> were growing maybe around 20 percent. But notice how it jumps. The churches that were 20 years old or less are growing at a 40% 10-year rate. This is a 10-year rate. And so the younger churches, the newer churches, are growing more quickly. A um, couple more examples. The Southern Baptists. They looked at churches, how many people are converted in a church per 100 members. So if a church has, on the average, say 100 members, how many new believers are becoming members of that church per 100 members? So they found out that churches that were less than three years old were averaging 10 new believers per 100 members per year. But then churches that were 3 to 15 years old were only averaging half that much at five new believers per 100 members per year. And churches over 15 years old were barely reaching not even two new members per year by conversion. In other words, new believers coming in. Sometimes these churches may be growing because believers from other churches are coming. That's not necessarily a bad thing. Or maybe they're, becoming, uh, they're growing because children are growing up and becoming members. But reaching new people for Christ, new churches, church plants, are more effective in reaching unbelievers for Christ. A um, couple more quick examples. Uh, this graph is a little complicated, but it's basically just showing you in the, uh, this would, these would be the free evangelical churches of Germany over a two-year period, the percentage of growth and the age of the church. And so over here, you'd have churches that are 150 years old, 100 years old, and you can see that they're, most of them are either they're not growing, some of them are going backwards, they're actually getting smaller, uh, you have, for some reason here, uh, some churches that were 60 years old that are showing good growth. But on the average, and the black line is the actual median average, 
half above, half less. It's these churches that were less than 10 years old that are showing on an average a 12%, I think that's 17% uh, growth over this two year period. The young churches are growing again. If we look at conversion growth, once again, you see here uh, a 5% conversion growth rate on churches that are five years or less, uh, the conversion growth rate is considerably higher in new churches. So I won't bore you with a lot of more statistics, uh, just maybe one more from Taiwan. This one shows that actually some of the older churches that were established before 1950 had pretty good growth, 15% uh, for a 10 year period. Uh, but on the whole, the churches that were less than five years old, this is an older study, were growing much more rapidly, uh, they had much stronger growth. And so uh, we see that new churches do tend to grow faster. Now, why is that? Uh, you can probably imagine. There's a number of reasons. For one, when you're starting a new church, in most places, if you don't evangelize, you don't grow. In fact, if you don't grow, you may not exist. You know, if you start out with 10 people, you know you have to reach new people. You're motivated. But it's not just that. Usually when a new church gets started, those core people, that team of people, say the church planner and, and some of the initial people, they are highly motivated to reach people for Christ. And of course, in a small church, if you're just a church with 20 or 30 people, somebody new comes in, you notice it. You follow up on that person. You build a relationship. There's not any anonymity there. Now, sometimes that can be a negative thing, but generally, the people in a church plant are more motivated, they notice new people more, and they're more creative. In other words, they're not in a tradition. Sometimes existing churches, they have a tradition. Well, we've always done it this way, and we've always done evangelism this way, and, but they're not reaching people. When new churches get started, you don't have a long tradition. You can do things different. You don't have to worry about somebody, an old church elder, who's going to stand up and say, we always did it this way, and we always need to do it this way. You can just start fresh. And you can say, well, maybe that old way we did evangelism is not going to reach these people. Let's try something new. And so new churches tend to be more creative, to meet the needs of the people, to connect with the people. They can adapt to the way their church does worship. They can adapt the way they do evangelism, discipleship. And so they tend to be more effective. Another practical reason. All churches eventually plateau in growth. Now let me sort of illustrate this. No church is going to grow on and on and on and on and on. I like to say even Yonggi Cho, his church in Korea, the world's largest church, plateaued at 900,000. Uh, no church is going to indefinitely keep growing. Every church is going to plateau, and most don't make it anywhere near 900,000. Uh, most churches, as a matter of fact, are going to plateau somewhere around 100 or 150, and in some parts of the world even smaller. And so let's just say there's all kinds of reasons for that. Sometimes it's because the pastor is only so gifted that his, his ministry ability is only that gifted. Sometimes you have, you know, you have rooms, that your, your church building only holds so many. There's all kinds of reasons why churches plateau, but they all do. And so if we were to make sort of a chart, and let's say, you know, here's 50 people, here's 100, and this first church gets planted and it grows up to around 100 people and it just sort of sits there. That's about as big as that church is just gonna get. And so you get, you know, say it took five years to get there. So it hit its plateau after about five years. Now at this point, they could say, well, let's just keep trying harder and harder and let's grow bigger and bigger and harder and harder. But they just don't. They're just not growing. So instead of feeling bad, see, now what happens is a lot of pastors start thinking, I'm a failure because my church won't grow anymore. But there's another alternative. What if this church were to say, we're going to send out 20 members to start a new church? Well, so they lost 20 members Guess what? They send out 20 members, and what will happen? They will tend to grow again back to their natural plateau. Now, what happens to the 20 members they sent out to start a new church? 
What did we just say? New churches tend to grow faster. So they send out the 20 members, but this church starts to really grow because it's a new church plant. Now that church somewhere along the line plateaus also. Right? Meanwhile, the mother church, the original church, they plateaued again. So you say, well, wait a minute. We plateaued again. It's time to start a new church. They send out another 20 people. And this church starts to grow, this new church plant. So the cumulative growth of all the churches now is going like this. And you see what happens? Before very long, just by sending out 20 members start a church, 20 members starting a church, this church still looks like it's just sitting at 100, but what have they done? They have started a movement, and the whole movement is now somewhere around 200. They're reaching more people for Christ by planting new churches. It also has the effect that this mother church, they have to keep evangelizing. See, what sometimes happens is when a church sort of plateaus, they start feeling comfortable. They say, well, you know, we've got the programs, we've got enough people, we can pay our bills, we've got a good pastor. You know, we should, yeah, we should keep evangelizing, but the motivation's not the same. You send out 20 people and you go, wait a minute, we need to keep evangelizing, we need to keep making disciples. And so all churches naturally plateau somewhere in their growth. So by planting new churches, we continue to reach new people for Christ. Even a small contribution can make a big difference. Jesus fed 5,000 people because of a little boy's five loaves. Regardless of the amount, your contribution is very important and greatly appreciated. Visit us at tvsseminary.com. Uh, this next point, new churches are able to reach persons and people groups who are not reached by existing churches. Uh, this is just partly because the new church is in a new neighborhood. And so they're the proximity. That church is just in a neighborhood where people can, can get to it easily, where they can build relationships, where they have a presence in that community. But that new church is also going to have a little different style. Even if that church was people sent out by an established traditional church, they're going to do their church just a little differently. They're going to have a little different style, different preacher, some different kinds of ministries to reach new people. And of course, if you have a specific goal to reach a new, say, a new ethnic group or a new subculture, Maybe the mother church was reaching well-educated, white-collar people that had good jobs, good education. But there's a section of the community that's, that's very poor. And those people don't feel comfortable coming to the church of the educated and the well-to-do. And no matter what that church tried to do, they're just not reaching poor people. And so you plant a church to reach those people where they will feel comfortable, where they're ministered to, and they don't feel that they're somehow uh, of less importance. So new churches reach new people. Now, sometimes even reaching the same people, this graphic just shows how this one church in uh, Bonn in Germany, by sending out people to start new churches, this cumulative effect, similar to what we had on the blackboard, happens. And so you, what we have here is in this first column, the mother church, the church in Bonn, which has about 300 and some odd members, they sent out in 1991 55 members. They sent out another in, uh, in 1989, they had sent out 14 members. In uh, 1993, they sent out 18 members and so on. So over the course of these five, six years, they sent out 118 people. But the mother church would, every time they'd send out, they'd, they'd, they'd regrow grow again. Now those churches grew over this period to a total of 214 members. So they sent out 118. It grew to 214 in those churches, although none of those churches were large. 
And the total adult attendance was also much more at 270. And the number of home groups grew from 24 in the mother church to 31 in the daughter churches, making a total of 55 small groups. And so the total number of people being reached, adults, was almost 700. And so by giving up 118 members, they were able to reach almost 700 people by planting these five churches. They're reaching new people that the original church did not reach. Here is Munich. Now, I was involved with this, and later on I will give more detail on the way this movement developed in Munich. But let's just take these three daughter churches. There was a central Munich church that had around 200 members right here. You see the 200 members. And then they sent out 34, 25, and 12. So a total of 71 members were sent out over roughly a 10-year period. Over those 10 years, they grew to 201 adult members, 300 adult attendants, with 23 home groups. Far outgrew the mother church, so making a total of 550 adult attenders and 33 home groups. Now, if that mother church, that central Munich church, had not sent out those people, it would have never grown that big itself. It grew by starting new churches. And so new churches, even if they're very similar, still reach new people. Okay. Um, uh, new churches are also necessary to saturate cities and regions with the gospel. Before, remember I was talking about one church per 10,000 people, or one church per 1,000 people. One church, even a very large church, just simply is not going to reach everyone. And so new churches are necessary to absolutely saturate regions, especially if you're talking about rural regions, where it's getting very spread out and there's a long distance to walk maybe to church and villages are separated. Maybe there's only one church in one central town and then people have a long distance to get to that church. You need to have churches that are, we would say, within walking distance, within bicycling distance. However, what their mode of transportation is, it has to be geographically nearby.